today. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Catherine Clark. Thank you. It is um, wonderful to be with you, and thank you, Stephen. And uh, the Stoneham Zoo is also in MA5, so uh, we are we are delighted you ended up at the right destination, and uh, even more delighted at the work that you're doing here at the Institute. And for all of you for being here and for the panel that's coming, and thank you, Amanda, for your incredible research. Um, so needed, uh, and, uh, and we will be working with you as we go forward with our projects as well. And as all of you know, um, addressing online abuse is so critical in this economy where most jobs require an online presence. And online abuse can not only have a chilling effect on speech, but can impact personal finances, feelings of safety, and participation in that online economy. I'd like to talk to you briefly about the work that we've been doing in Congress, and I hope the partnership with each of you as we move into the next session. This was not an issue that when I ran for Congress in a special election in 2013 that I ran on or, or even thought much about, except that as a woman in politics, I certainly was no stranger um, to the phenomenon uh, of online abuse. But I became involved with this issue when I learned of a constituent uh, named Brianna Wu who is a game developer, a video game developer, who lives in my district in Arlington. She contacted us because she had been subjected to countless threats of rape, dismemberment, murder. Um, they had her personal address was released, uh, detailed times of day, her husband's work schedule, and the type of weapons, including videos of those weapons, that would be used to commit the murder of Brianna and her family. Um, and we started meeting with Brianna, uh, with other victims of online abuse, the criminal justice community, anti-violence advocates, experts in the field of cyber crimes, and nonprofit groups that were fighting online abuse to see where we could help. And what we learned is very much what Amanda has crystallized today, that millions of women and girls are online right now navigating their personal and professional lives, and they are the disproportionate target of the very worst kind of abuse, threats of sexual assault, murder, sextortion, non-consensual pornography, and the list goes on. The same holds true for people of color and members of the LGBTQ community. And we learn that whether it's developers or law enforcement or lawmakers, little has been done to prevent and stop online abuse or to help victims. And what we're hearing from advocates and victims of abuse that too often, instead of taking proactive measures to prevent and stop abuse, social media platforms have put the onus on the victim to resolve the abuse. Local police, we have found, uh, extremely well-intentioned, but have almost no training or resources for the victims that they seek help. The most common response we heard from our local law enforcement was, what is Twitter? and um, it goes from there. It's not their fault, this is not what they've been trained to deal with, but we have to address this if we're going to really come up with solutions. We also learned that federal laws have not kept up to date with cyber crimes, like swatting, sextortion, or non-consensual pornography. And even in cases where it is against federal law to use the internet to cause fear, of death or harm, these crimes are rarely investigated or prosecuted. And when they do end up 
in our criminal justice system, the lack of prioritization and understanding of these issues really benefit the perpetrator and not the victim. Uh, within the last 18 months, we were working with a, um, a victim of Gamergate um, and also of a, uh, a very methodical ex-boyfriend who um, went after someone that many of you may have heard of named Zoe Quinn. And her boyfriend was in Boston, in Massachusetts, and when she went before a Massachusetts Superior Court judge, after documenting years of this very methodically done uh, ruining of her reputation, uh, was told to simply get offline. And unfortunately, that is something that we still see routinely in our court systems and from law enforcement. So for Brianna and the many, many other victims who have been failed by this system, uh, this has meant taking drastic and life-altering decisions. We've seen women leave their homes, hire private security, forfeit work opportunities, move to different states, sometimes across the country. We've seen uh, young women and girls opting out of career paths, especially journalism and politics. As we look for solutions, it's important that we see how online abuse is so tied to our 21st century economy and so tied to equality and justice and freedom of speech. What we've been working on is really trying to form a partnership with so many of you and trying to address these systematic problems on multiple fronts. And I hope that you will work with us on some of the solutions that we have proposed in Congress. Thanks to the many brave voices that have come forward and been willing to tell their stories, put themselves in harm's way again, we have been able to make sure that our leaders in Washington have a better understanding of this issue. We want to make sure that our laws empower the Department of Justice and our local law enforcement with the training and resources and guidance they need to help victims of online abuse and to stop those who perpetuate these crimes. We also want to make sure that our laws are keeping pace with the prevalence and type of cyber crimes we're seeing. From addressing severe online threats to combating, combating crimes like swatting and sextortion, I've introduced several bills that will prioritize the investigation and prosecution with the Department of Justice, as well as close the gaps in the federal code to ensure protections for victim. I'm happy to say that since we started our work with advocates and partners, we've got the backing of the House of Representatives for two years in a row to issue instructions to DOJ to increase the prosecution and investigation of severe online threats. And we cannot let that work go backwards in a new administration. We have to keep pressing forward on that. We have also um, put forth a bill that would give local communities and law enforcement training and um, resources so that they can ha have the, the tools that they need to offer help locally. And my staff and I have had many meetings, um, some positive, most not, uh, with the FBI, trying to get them to realize the importance of these prosecutions. We've been working with developers from startups to very established brands. We have had an open dialogue with tech and media developers, and we want to be helpful in creating the lines of communication. But we need to do a better job uh, with our tech community. We are firmly committed that if you are designing social media platforms or other types of high-tech products and programs, you have to have diversity in the room. Diversity starts with design. And if we don't have that, we are never going to be able to really be uh, look at how we get to the root of this problem when it comes to abuse through certain platforms. If we don't have diversity, 
in the room if we, we will continue to see the disparities in how we navigate and participate in digital spaces. We have been very grateful that uh, decision makers, especially in Silicon Valley, are taking bigger proactive steps and we applaud that and we continue to work with them. But we need to continue our work um, with some of the incredible uh, nonprofit groups that we have worked with, Cyber Civil Rights Initiative, the National Network to End Domestic Violence, and the Anti-Defamation League that have been true partners in helping us create this work. I would like to see all these bills um, pass in the next Congress. Um, but I have to tell you that uh, it has been a challenge. Often when we put together um, packets on an uh, anti-swatting bill that I introduced, which pretty swiftly brought a swatting incident at my own home, uh, uh, which you know I had the distinct advantage of understanding what swatting was and what was probably going on. Um, but there was that moment of terror when I stepped out not knowing uh, what was happening and why all these lights were out and I stepped out and the street was blocked and I thought something awful was happening in our neighborhood. And then I saw the long guns on my lawn and I realized that you know something might be about to happen that is really critical uh, to my family. And there was just that moment where I, I just was filled with fear about what was happening um, and what might be starting to happen. But then the police officer approached me and said, we got an anonymous call of a shooter. And I'm probably one of the few people who's like, oh, I know what this is. Um, but if you didn't know, and when I go around and talk to members about signing on to the swatting bill, and give them uh, clips that my Cracker Jack staff has prepared from their districts of swatting incidents, they have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, people don't understand what swatting is, what doxing is, all these terms that we unfortunately have become familiar with, we need to make sure they understand the prevalence in their own district and how this relates to really security for everybody in this country. No part of the country is immune and no particular constituent of any political ideology is immune either. Um, we need your partnership. We need this campaign to be in the halls of Congress as well. We need people to clearly understand the free speech um, that is at risk and the feeling of security and economic security as well that we put in jeopardy every day. I invite you to um, go to our website. Uh, it's Catherine Clark with no E. And um, you can see detailed descriptions of our bills. Um, it is the stories of what is happening to victims, what is happening uh, it to certain professions, what is happening to free speech and security. That is how, when we have those stories, the stories you know, either personally or from people you've worked with or from research that you're doing, that is how we change the laws in Congress and we change the minds and we change the tide on this abuse and online stalking. I am proud to be in partnership with you. I thank you for your incredible work uh, that is represented in this room and thank you for having me today.